This learning object is a production of Abu Dhabi Men's College, Center of Excellence for ICT and Learning Technology. Today we're going to look at uh, an introduction to geographic information systems. Um, I'll start off by first uh, trying to offer a definition of geographic information systems. Uh, as the word says, uh, geographic information systems can also be called GIS, right? Uh, which is a short uh, acronym, official acronym for uh, geographic information systems. Uh, there are several definitions. Uh, if you consult textbooks, you'll find at least 80 to 90 different definitions. Uh, some people believe geographic information systems can be assigned. Some believe that it could be basically a tool okay, or a technology. Uh, that debate I'm not yet to actually resolve, but uh, in a separate session that could be dealt with. So I'm going to go on straight away into defining GIS. Um, it's basically an information system, uh, computer-based, and it solves problems, helps us to solve problems. It integrates information in a way that helps us to understand and find solutions to problems. Uh, data about real-world objects are stored in a database which is linked to a map. So at any point in time, we can get information about real-world objects in the X, Y, and Z, meaning coordinate and height, uh, three-dimensional. When data in the database changes, the map also automatically changes. Okay? So it has a dynamic relationship. I'm now going to look at the five components of GIS. Uh, they are basically people. Uh, the second one is data, the third one is procedures, the fourth is hardware, and the fifth is software. Now, very quickly, I'll talk about each one. People are very important. One of the most important aspects to write procedures for GIS to perform certain operations. Data, on the other hand, is also very important as well. Uh, accuracy is, is the essence of data to uh, formulate good uh, mapping system in any country or organization. Procedures, again, programs, uh, uh, algorithms that need to be written for GIS. Hardware, advances in ha uh, computer technology are giving us uh, speed, accuracy, so it forms a good platform for GIS. Software, there's several types of software that we use in GIS. The GIS software itself, which helps us solve problems, as well as other software such as satellite imagery, remote sensing, photogrammetry, databases, etc. The functions of GIS, very briefly, uh, capture data. Now, data can be in different forms. We could capture it by digitizing, by remote sensing, by photogrammetry, by surveying by getting uh, digital files uh, or interoperability where we can read from any format. GIS has this capability. Then we store information. We can store information in two formats. In raster format, which is a gridded cell and doesn't give you as much accuracy, as well as a vector format, which is X and Y. And the uh, position of that is similar to that of a map. Uh, we can manipulate data in a GIS. Uh, we can analyze. A very important operation is analysis to help us solve particular problems. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, we can also display and query data. In other words, we can display maps at different scales. We can symbolize the maps. We can show information of less detail and information with greater detail. We can query things. We can look if we want to find out how many houses are affected by flooding in a certain area. We could find this information out with the GIS. Uh, capturing data, we, 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 as I said earlier, we use digitizing. We can also use scanning, GPS. Uh, we will look at a GPS system just now. Uh, which is, we have a, a system here, and we can also, by um, uh, surveying total station, we can capture data as well, and other means. Uh, I spoke about storing of data a short while, querying, 
I have some illustrations which I could show at a later stage. And analyzing data, uh, again, just to um, extend what I said earlier, uh, if you wanted to find out in a certain area, for example, how many houses lie within 100 meters of a water main? Uh, what is the total number of customers within 10 kilometers of a particular store or supermarket? What population of alfalfa crop is within 500 meters of a well? We could answer all these questions with the GIS system. Uh, we call this proximity analysis. Another important operation in analysis we use is called overlay analysis. In GIS, we store information in different layers. For example, we might store roads on one layer. We might store uh, sewer pipes on another layer. Uh, we might store buildings on another layer. So we can overlay these as we require them, uh, and we can extract data from that. And, and get uh, analyzed data and do interpretation. Um, we could also look at uh, a good example is uh, linear developments where you have, you could have an accident in one area and a hospital in another location. You need to know what is the quickest route to get the accident victim to that hospital. So we can use a GIS to help us determine this uh, route together with the GPS, the global positioning system. Uh, displaying data, as I said earlier, we could provide data in the form of maps uh, as a table of attribute data, uh, or we could give in the form of graphs or reports. GIS supports all those options. Uh, geographic data is, has three important elements. It has geometry, which is basically the shape. Uh, under geometry, we focus on, on three important things. We can represent any feature on the Earth's surface with a line, a point, or a shape, or a polygon, or area sometimes we call it. Each of these features has a spatial location. It has an X and Y value okay, in space. It has attribute data, in other words, the characteristics of this feature, as well as it has behavior. Behavior is the manipulation aspect that we could use. The forms of geographic data, there's spatial data I spoke about earlier, has a position on the Earth's surface, tabular data, and we also have image data. Uh, what is becoming increasingly useful and important in this field is the availability of remotely sensed data. Uh, basically what that is, satellites orbiting the Earth's uh, the Americans have put out more than 20 satellites orbiting the Earth, and these continuously capture data on the Earth's surface so we can get uh, accurate data 24 hours a day, and we refine this data by utilizing our remote sensing software called Erdas Imagine, and that can give us uh, sub-meter uh, accuracy, and we integrate that with the GIS. Another important feature about GIS is the feature spatial relationship, which we call topology. Topology is the interconnection, adjacency, and how features connect with each other. For example, you might have uh, Washington State in the US on the west coast, on the east coast you'll have New York. You might have a road, US uh, 80 is the highway. That is an example of connectivity because that road connects the two states. Adjacent to Washington is the Pacific Ocean. So that's an example of what is next door, its neighbors. And to New York, adjacent to that is the Atlantic Ocean. So that's another example of adjacency. So basically, topology is a concept in GIS that tells us who our neighbors are on each side, as well as behind us and in front of us. 